Alex here from Canon Academy, and I'm going to show you how we resolve two enantiomers or two compounds with different chirality using the properties of diastereomers and enantiomers. Namely, what makes these different is their different dipole moments. So let me start off by, by showing these two compounds here, which are enantiomers. Let me label them compound 1 and 2. Compound 1 if we draw its dipole moments or the electronegative bond, uh, like partial bonds, this dipole would point towards this electronegative oxygen because it's more electronegative. We looked at our electronegativity table, meaning that we would have a partial negative here. And we already have a hydrogen bond because this hydrogen is connected to this electronegative oxygen. And this would actually make this hydrogen bond a little stronger or be able to form hydrogen bonds, stronger hydrogen bonds in solution to others of these compounds. And the stronger the intermolecular forces are, the harder they are to break, meaning you would have to boil them at a higher temperature for them to evaporate and break those bonds. So let's go through this one as well, this other chiral center, and it has the same thing. It's pointing to this other electronegative oxygen and the one below is doing the same thing. So what this will do is, since all of these are pointing the same direction, all this side is going to form a ton of strong hydrogen bonds. That'll again, more hydrogen bonds, it's going to be higher boiling point because they're all facing the same direction. Now, with enantiomers, what we've learned is that they have the same physical properties. The reason for that is when you, when you have the mirror image, you still have the same dipole moments just in the other direction, but they still all point in the same direction, meaning that you still have this a whole side that has a partial negative dipole moment with all the same strong hydrogen bonds. But when you get to diastereomers, as shown below, we'll label these three and four. Three is just like the compound above it. Again, all these point, would have dipole moments that point in the same direction with strong hydrogen bonds. But the diastereomer, because one of the sides is reversed, if you draw the dipole moments of them, these two would point in the same direction as before. But since this one points the other direction, you kind of have a tug of war going on. Where this one, since it's pulling in the other direction, it partially cancels out the dipole moments on the other side. What this means is these hydrogen bonds are not as strong as the others. Weaker hydrogen bonds, or less of them, could mean a lower boiling point. So enantiomers, since they have the same dipole moments, have, have the same boiling point. So here, BP of number one equals BP of number two. Here, your boiling point of 3 since and 4 are different because 4 has different dipole moments and weaker hydrogen interactions in solution. So you could boil these two if they were together. And basically, you could boil this one off at a lower temperature. And all you would have left over is this compound 3 in solution. So you can separate or resolve these diastereomers. So basically, we can use this in a lab to separate two enantiomers. So let's say if you had the R and S enantiomer. I didn't do an, the chirality of these, so they might be the other way around. But just to say they're obviously two different. <clears throat> they obviously are mirror images of each, of each other or enantiomers. If you reacted them with something that's optically pure, optically pure meaning that you basically only have one version of it, you only have the SS, let's assume that this is the SS version, because if you had a mix of these, you would end up with a mix of products, even more so. But if you only had one, and let's say you had an SN2 mechanism, you can ignore that if you're not on that part yet. Just to say it's a reaction, and when you combine these two, you get two different compounds 
let me write this in real quick. The two different compounds would be diastereomers of each other because they originally started as enantiomers. You would have diastereomers if you reacted to them with something optically pure. Now, as we said before, since these have different dipole moments, all these have a partial ne form a partial negative and strong hydrogen bonds. Why these pull apart and cancel each other out a little, this would boil off at a lower temperature because the dipole moments go against each other. So basically, the way you resolve two enantiomers or a racemic mixture is you react them with an optically pure compound and boil them off afterward based on these new physical properties that you gave them. You can also call this optically pure if you had a, you can make a salt out of them too and dissolve them, but they all play off of the same comp, the same theory of forming diastereomers because diastereomers have different pr physical properties due to different dipole moments.